Hi, my name is Julia Silgi, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And today, in this screencast, we're going to use this week's Tidy Tuesday data set on water sources. And we're going to train um, a model to predict whether a water source has water available at it. We're going to use um, a, a random forest. Um, model, we're going to do some feature engineering, and we're going to use um, information about each water source that was recorded during a visit to the source, and then predict, um, is there water there at that water source, or um, is there not um, at the time of, of that visit? Um, let's get started. All right, let's get started with learning about these water sources. and. Um, building a model to understand whether water is available at one of them. So this, um, we're going to go and get the data set here. Um, so each one of the rows of this data set is a source of water that is tabulated by this organization. And we have information here. There's a, there's a row ID, a latitude and longitude where it is, when a report was made, um, and then the status ID. So the status ID, if we look at what is in there, there's um, Y, which means yes, water is available at that um, water source. N, water is not available at that water source when the report was taken. And U, meaning it's unknown. They don't know um, based on the report. So what we're going to do in this screencast is build a model to predict when there is water available there. I think I'm going to just exclude those U's, those unknown ones. It's, um, you know, it's a smaller proportion. And I think um, I'm going to say that the goal of the model is going to be able to um, just uh, predict the Y cases from the N cases. And then if we, um, let's see what other kind of data we have here. If we scroll down, we've got um, water source. Where is the water coming from? What is the technology that uses to get the water? And it looks like some of these are um, uh, kind of uh, like an either or kind of thing. Like it is either a spring or a like either it's tech, water source or water tech. Is that true? through this whole thing. I wonder if that's true through the whole thing. That would be interesting. Like either there's a source of water or a technology. Is it always one or the other? It is here. I wonder if that's true though through the whole thing. So it looks like sometimes both are NA. No, it looks like sometimes, sometimes there's something in both. So like surface water, there is a hand pump with surface water. So, I mean, there's tons of NAs here. Wow, just uh, just tons, just tons. Okay, and then, so then there, a water source can be a borehole and you can have water tech. So it looks like there's just really a mix, just a mix of what that can mean. Um, what is a facility like country? Um, the year that is installed, which also um, plenty of NAs there. And then who installed it? Um, that can be, wow, just a ton of missing data. Okay, so um, organizations, other um, government, um, and then information on payment. Um, uh, do you know? Do people have to pay when they come to um, to use this water or not? Or and but it's you know the the information here is encoded in tons of different ways. And then lastly, some information about the status, which it looks like might be actually a field that's delimited by the by the the bar, the the pipe, the Unix pipe. Um, character here. So I don't know if I'm going to use that. Anyway, anyway, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do when I have, um, when I have spatial information, I can't help but want to make a map. Let's see, so it would be longitude on the x-axis, latitude on the y-axis. Let's make the color the um, status ID. I, you know what? I think I'm just going to filter down to um, 
the status ID being in a Y um, N like this. And then let's um, put some points on this point and it's gonna there's a ton of them so we they're gonna over plot a lot this is still gonna be so many but let's let's give that a go and let's see um, this is a lot I mean, you know there was a lot of data there if you noticed so this is gonna take a minute to um, to render I imagine um, <clears throat> this is actually Surprising me how long it's taking to render, to be honest. Um, so we're let, let, we can get a look and see what's going on, and and this will help us see a couple of things, including how um, uh, how often these are how often the data is wrong. Okay, so most of this data is in Africa, and so this shape here that we see here is Africa, but. Um, and some of these points out here are other places, but some of these are just are just wrong. They're just wrong. Um, and you know, I think um, I think I'm gonna. There is a ton of data in here, and I think for the uh, purposes of this of this um, demonstration, I'm gonna filter down to a single country. Um, Let's look and see what we've got in the manner of countries here. So if we say count country name like this. I think um, let's let's pick Sierra Leone as the country that we're gonna use. And let's see what that looks like. So that should cut it down a lot. Hopefully that renders a lot faster there we go okay so and again we see how often latitude and longitude are wrong right so let's start we've got like a point up here over here over here so let's say um so those are just plain wrong latitudes longitudes and latitudes so what happens if we just you know f do some very very rough um, cleaning here of things that I know are wrong because that's not where Sierra Leone is. Um, what else? Uh, probably uh, on a map like this, it probably is better if we do cord fixed. And this is so light over here compared to even there, it's getting so um, uh, cord fixed. And so we can make uh, let's see, it's guides, right? And then I think I say color and then guide, um, guide legend. And then there is like a override. Yes, override it. And then I think I say alpha equal, no, that doesn't make any sense. Let's see, is it in a list? I think it's in a list like that. So there, that is much better. Okay, so here are water sources that are in Sierra Leone. Um, and uh, you can see, I don't know, are those roads or rivers? Um, it would be really interesting to spend a little more time and learn a little more. There's probably still some errors out here, um, but that I think is probably good enough for us to move forward with. Like a little more cleaning might be good, but um, we'll, we'll just go with that. Okay, so let's, um, let's make a, uh, let, let's just, this, so this is gonna be our data frame, our, our data we're gonna use. Let's call it water, like this, and let's, let's run that, whoops. And let's look at what we've got here. So I am going to, I am, I don't need the country name anymore because we just have Sierra Leone. I don't, I'm not gonna use that status. It's pretty interesting, but we're not gonna do that. And I'm not gonna use report dates. Um, we are gonna use the, um, the date, the install year, but we're not gonna use a report date. You could kind of try to look at that report date and maybe filter to more recent reports or something like that, but um, we're gonna just keep all the reports. Okay, so this is looking um, useful and better. 
um, like we're going to be able to do something with it. Boy, look at those NA values. We're going to have to deal with that. Um, uh, that payment, let's think about it before we move on. Okay, so there's 63 levels there. Um, let's look at some of these other ones. So water tech, 15 levels here. Okay, so I, what we're gonna do is when we do our, our feature engineering, we are going to um, learn from the training set which factor levels we are gonna have um, and, and only keep, you know, five of those or something like that. And we're gonna, same thing for here. Okay, we don't need, we won't need to do that for a facility type. Install year is a numeric. Installer. I'm just checking how many levels there are in these and seeing what I wanna do here. So this has many different levels. So we're just going to, um, we're gonna throw that into the model, into our feature engineering and um, bundle um, less frequently occurring levels together. And the, um, did I check water source yet? Pay water tech. Let's just do water source. Yeah, that one looks okay too. So these little ones will get like bundled together into an other. Um, but this payment, Boy, that payment one. Um, no, water is free. No payment, it's free. Um, only if there is a breakdown. I don't understand what that means. You pay if there is a breakdown. Um, boy, so that is something I did. It would be good to learn more about what that means. Um, so we've got yes, yes, like different, um, only after system breakdown do you pay? That's a little confusing to me. Um, so this, I think I could try to handle this within my feature engineering, but it's not something that I'm like learning from training data and applying to testing data. So I think I'm just going to do a little bit of this right here. I'm going to say um, pay equals case when. So if if I detect a no at the beginning, then I'm going to call that no. And same thing for yes. Um, yes, we're going to call that yes. Um, if it is NA, I want to keep the NAs because that means nobody, we don't know. And the, if it's not NA, it doesn't start with no, it doesn't start with yes. I'm going to say, um, it's complicated. It's complicated, which gosh, it is in so many, in so much of real life. Okay, so now let's get this ready for um, uh, modeling by changing all the character, all the character um, variables to factors. Okay, there we go. Doesn't that look ready for modeling? <laughs> this is, I mean, this is the, this is the real stuff, right? Um, oh, I guess maybe, maybe let's do a little bit more um, exploratory data analysis before we start. Just, just a cute, a few quick things. So like, let's, for example, look at install year um, uh, and let's make a, Let's make some histograms. Uh, let's put density on the y-axis so that um, we can compare them uh, more easily. So let's put like histograms here and let's do position equals dodge. So they're not like on top of each other vertically, but um, um, no, not dodge, identity, I'm sorry. And alpha equals like 0.5 or something. So this shows us um, for whether, like we could say, fill equals, uh, we could say um, water available, like this, water available. And so it looks like um, older, 
So older water sources are more likely to have no water available and newer ones are more likely to have water available. Um, there's a huge spike in you know, this, this kind of region, which is interesting, um, interesting slash worrisome about the data. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there's, that's real. Maybe there was a big push or something. I don't know. And then the other thing, I don't know, I'm a little worried about that payment uh, variable that I made. So if we do this and then we, do we just make like a, um, just, or, oh, what's the best way to do this? Actually, you know what the best way to do this is? I'm going to say, I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to say, um, ggplot, yes, I'm going to say y equals, um, um, what did I say? I was looking at, I was looking at, um, I was looking at pay and status ID, pay and status ID, and I am going to say Y equals pay, fill equals status ID, and then I'm going to say um, a geom bar. I don't use this as often, but um, this should fill it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And then we don't actually, in this case, no, we do. We absolutely do. And so we could say something like labs fill equals water available. Um, and notice here that, um, that having an NA value for payment is hugely associated with having no water available. So like, I, I mean, maybe it, so much so that um, maybe it's more just a recording artifact. I don't know, but not entirely, right? Because it, we do see some examples going the other way. It's just strongly associated with it. So, um, yeah, yeah, this would be, I would love to learn more about how this data gets recorded um, to use this here. Anyway, that's that's super, that looks super important. Whether that's like a, is, I mean, is that causal? Like which way does the causal thing go? Do you know, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, there we go. So, so that's a little, just a little more, um, um, exploratory data analysis. And now let's move on to building the model. So the first let's load tidy models. And then let's in our let's first set up our um, spending our data budget. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make a split. So we split. Uh, no, we split our uh, our water data set, and we're going to do stratified splitting on that status ID like that. And then we're going to make water train from the training using the training function. We're going to do water test using the testing function. And then we're going to make some uh, resampled folds, resampling folds. I'm going to, this, there's a ton of data here. And I'm going to make some vfold cross validation vfold cross-validation folds, um, resamples. I'm gonna use the training data. The training data is what goes into resampling. And I'm going to stratify on the status ID as well. The yes, that yes, no variable. So water folds like this. So what we've got here now is spending our data budget. So we've got training, testing. We will not use testing to the very end. And now we have our resamples here. So in each one of these resamples, we have some data that we're going to use for analysis and some data that we're going to use for assessment. 
And again, this, this data, we've got so much data here. It is just a ton. Um, I am going to use um, uh, I'm going to use a pretty straightforward model here for fitting. I'm going to use a Ranger Random Forest model. I'm not going to do any tuning. Um, a rain, a random Forest, if you give enough, if you have enough trees, um, tend to do pretty well without any tuning. So, for in the interest of um, uh, being straightforward and I am uh, and time, I'm going to not tune it today. Um, so. I'm going to use the use models package, which what it does is um, it's part of tidy models and it helps you um, it helps you generate code. So it's it helps you generate all your code for setting things up. Um, and so what I what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my formula, which is status ID explained by everything else, all my predictors, and my data. And my data I'm going to give it is water train, my training set here. And so if I enter that, it gives me code. It just spits out code. And so what I can do is I can, um, I can, um, come over here and paste this in and it just has set everything up for me which is so convenient and nice um, so I'm going to change a few things here for example I'm not going to tune um, my random forest I'm just going to make sure I have enough trees and I'm going to call that good enough um, I am going to so instead of tune grid I'm going to use um, fit resamples um, and I am going to um, I am going to add my resamples here. And instead of, you know, there isn't a grid here because I'm not tuning a grid. I am going to save um, my the predictions with save um, pred equals true. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can um, <clears throat> make an uh, an ROC curve and stuff for my resamples, so you can see that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make some edits up here to my feature engineering because that boy, I I need to deal with that. Right? I've got I've got just some just some wild stuff going on in this data set as often is such a, so often the re case in real data sets and so what use models a function like this is so nice is you you get started you paste in and then you can make all the edits that you need to and often what I find in dealing with real data sets is what I often need to change the most is the feature engineering so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to update the role of that row ID and I am going to give it a new role. I'm going to call it ID because it's not a feature. I mean, it's not a predictor. It's not an outcome. It's just something I want to keep in my data set um, as I go along because <clears throat> maybe I want to use it to join later or to identify um, an observation. The next thing I want to do is I am going to start thinking about all those NA values. So what can we do when we have NA values like this? Um, this is too many NA values to impute, um, all of those. Um, but, it, you know, and it might actually be informative in this case, right? Like the fact that for this row, I don't know the water source. Like, is that informative for whether there's water there or not? Maybe, like it seems like that's probably the best thing to do here. So I am going to um, use a function called step unknown. And what step unknown does is it assigns a missing value in a factor level to this, va this new level called unknown. So I'm going to step unknown for all the nominal predictors. So I'm gonna. So that means it's for water source, water tech, facility type, installer, and pay. So that's happening to all of those. That's what I want to do. So all of those NAs are getting pre replaced with unknown. Next, I want to do step other also on all nominal predictors. So this means, if you remember, um, like, uh, what was it? Installer, there, were, there was like, I don't know, 100 or something levels in that. I do not want to put that into my random forest. It will 
take a zillion years to train and the you know that's not a I don't I don't want that for my model so instead what I will do with step other is I will pool infrequently occurring values into an other category I think this threshold is a little high especially for a random forest it it can it can go a little lower than that it still handle things. Um, it can deal with more factor levels. So I'm going to lower that threshold a bit. Um, what else do we have? We have um, install year. Install year water drain. Install year has NA values in it too. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if we saw in our EDA, it does look like that may be important. So here, um, I am going to actually use an imputation step. So we've got a lot of options for imputation. Um, you know, I could, I could impute the mean, um, the median. I could impute using... Um, if I used k nearest neighbors, I would have to change all of these to like dummy variables, I think. I'm going to try um, a, a linear model, an imputation with a linear model. So what I put here then is I, I just say um, step impute linear install year. So this will fit a linear model and impute the year with the other variables that we have. Um, and what else do I want to do? Um, I think the other thing I want to do is, so if I look at my training data set here and I count um, status ID, it's like a third to two thirds um, uh, imbalance towards the yes category. So I am going to load Themis, which is an add-on package for, for recipes, and I am going to step down sample status ID. We've got so much data here, I'm just going to down sample it. So I'm just going to throw away the data. Okay. Uh, what else do I need to do here? I need to do parallel, do this so that I do this with the cores I have available. And now I'm going to start this. So what's happening? I have made a pre processing recipe. Uh, or a recipe for pre-processing and feature engineering where I take the data set and I do the kind of um, steps to, um, to process, to create features that I need to for to get my data ready for modeling. I have created a random forest model specification. Then I have added both the feature engineering recipe and the model specification to a workflow. And now what I'm doing here in fit resamples is I'm fitting the workflow to the folds. So if you remember, oh, it's done. The, um, that was pretty fast. Um, the folds, there I have 10 cross-validation folds. So what just happened is I fit this model 10 times, one time to each of the folds, and it was fit to this analysis set, and then it was evaluated on this holdout set within the cross-validation fold. Fit to this set, evaluated on this, fit to this set, and so on. So now we can kind of explore these results that we got and decide, um, you know, draw some conclusions about what we learned. So the first, you know, this is called Ranger Tune. <clears throat> Even though I didn't tune it. Oh, okay. I've got to change the name about that. That's going to bother me. Ranger T R S. Ranger Tune. There we go. Okay. Um... All right, so first we can look, we can do collect metrics on Ranger uh, RS, like so. Um, wow, not bad, right? I mean, how much of this is that payment? I don't know, like a lot, right? But um, but still, that's that looks pretty nice. Um, um, so those, those metrics are um, perhaps disturbingly good. <laughs> Um, and so now we can do, we can also get out the predictions like so. So these are now the predictions on, um, from each of the folds. 
and we can, um, if we group by that ID column, we can uh, compute an ROC curve. Uh, we need the uh, true, the true value and the uh, probability of uh, this first predicted um, probability of that class. Um, and so this would give us an ROC curve, or four, 10 ROC curves actually. And then we can uh, pipe that to an auto plot method like so. <clears throat> There we go. So those are 10 ROC curves uh, for the for this random forest model. So this is what that that what was our was our ROC uh, 0.95. So this is what 0.95 looks like. Um, <laughs> Good, uh, nice. Um, and we can also do a confusion matrix on these results. So a confusion matrix, um, it's that we actually, we have a we have 10 resamples here. So what we actually want is a resampled um, confusion matrix. We will pass in our um, resampled results. And this is in a tidy format. We can say tidy equals false if you want it in something that might look a little more familiar. And you can plot that as well, like so. And so what this says is, um, so this notice, um, when we do something like downsampling, it only happens on the um, on the training day, the training set, or the analysis set, it does not happen on any evaluation sets or any testing sets. So you can see that the yes side is really big, and the no side is smaller. And you can see which you know how relatively how well we're doing on either side, which is not so bad. We're better. We are better at the yes than the no's, but um, it's not it's not too terrible. Okay, so that those are our resampled results. If we if we were like if we say okay, we're happy with this model, we would like to um, uh, move on and be done and say yes, we would like it. We can use the last fit function where we take that workflow, that same workflow, and instead of fitting it uh, ten times to um, all those resamples, we can fit it one time. Um, to uh, and if we fit it to the split, do a last fit to the split. What we're doing is we're fitting it one time to the um, all the training data at once, not to resampled training data, and then we're ev going to evaluate it on the testing data. So if I I can do a collect metrics just like I did on um, the on the re uh, uh, resampled results and I, we you know we get results that are about the same because we um, are not overfitting here and we can um, also do something that looks very similar in terms of an ROC curve or if we wanted to get another confusion matrix we could get out the um, predictions and do a confusion matrix here, which would we would need to say status ID, the true val the true value, and then the predicted class like that. And we can again um, make a plot with that if we would like of a, another confusion matrix. So, um, so that and and if you want to save this model to um, use it later. There is a, the, there's, let me, we never looked at this. So final, final fitted is a tibble. It's got the split. It's got metrics, notes if anything went wrong, predictions and, and a workflow. And that fitted, you have to do it like this. I don't know, it's not great right now. Um, that This is a fitted workflow like so. And this is something that you could, um, uh, you know, you could do like write, RDS like this and you could write it compressed in the way that's appropriate to you and then um, save it and use it later for prediction because this is something that you can predict on. So for example, we can say predict, um, so like uh, what was it called, water test, um, oh I need another, uh, and you know we can, if we do this, you know we can say 
and we can and it always predicts it always predicts y no let's oh well y was the majority class so it's going to predict y most of the time um okay let's talk about one more thing before we're done and that is variable importance um so let's use the vip package for this so for the vip package if we we're going to use a function called VIP like this and the object that we're going to send in um, I believe <clears throat> I believe right now it still does need to be a parsnip model not a workflow so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to do something like this um, we're going to go back to our model specification and we actually need to um, uh, change the engine a little bit. If you noticed up here, we set the engine as Ranger and we're going to set the engine and we're going to change the importance. We're going to do permutation importance like this. And then we're going to do something like this. We're just going to fit that model specification uh, and we're going to say data equals what do we put here? Like what, what data do we put here? Because we, like we let our, our workflow handle all this complicated, you know, back and forth with our feature engineering. So for our model, for variable importance, we are going to have to do this ourselves. We're going to have to make some data here to do this with, and then we'll like pipe it into um, VIP and we can, you know, whatever, whatever you want here. Um, I mean, not whatever you want, whatever is supported by VIP. Okay, so the way we do this to make that data, we take our recipe, we prep it, which means we say we estimate from the training data, the any statistics that we need, we learn the things we need, and then we bake it um new data equals null so um so that means we so this part means we um, estimate or learn what we need to learn for each of those steps and then like for example train that linear model to impute and then bake means we apply it to any data set like we could apply it to testing data we could apply it to new data new data equals null means um get get back out the data that it, we, we needed to start with. Um, so this is what comes out. It's a tibble again, it's a data again. So if we just prepped the data, this is where um, a lot of the work happens. Like it has, you know, it's like everything is trained now, but when you bake it, you get data back out. Oh, we can't have that there. So the thing about after you bake it, it's literally just data again. So you kind of lose all the, you know, all the recipes and tidy models like um, knowledge about what what columns are. But that's what we need to get put to kind of at the intersection of VIP right now. Um, maybe we can work on making that a little bit better. Okay, so let's let's run this. Uh, status is not the right thing. Status ID is the right thing. Okay, so we are making um, a, a data set, which is the training data that's pre-processed. So we're sort of manually pre-processing the data set, and then we are sending this in. So we're fitting the model again. The, we're fitting the whole model again, except we're... Um, um, we're doing it a little slower this time <laughs> because we're calculating permutation importance and then we're making a plot to understand the variable importance and look at that the pay it is super important super high um what a shock what a shock there um i don't know it makes me a little uncomfortable um that like is that actually something that's um related or is does it go the other way around right like when there is no water um there's no information about payment but anyway given that being said here it is um the next most important thing is uh, the water technology who installed it the year and then they start dropping off here um as a very last thing Let's just make one more plot so you can, for example, see the different levels of water tech and how they um, how they relate. So this is the now the processed training data here. So let's take those. Let's take status ID. Let's take uh, we already did pay. Well, let's throw it in again. Let's take water tech tech. 
and that installer. <clears throat> let's make this tidy. <clears throat> so let's make it um, those those uh, three columns. Let's say names to feature and values to, that value is fine, I think. So we've made this into a long skinny data frame, a tidy data frame. And then let's make the same kind of plot that we made here. Same kind of plot. Um, we are going to need to facet. So let's do a facet. Um, yeah, actually a facet grid, a facet grid. So we are going to say um, rows equal um, feature. And then if we say scales equals free Y and then um, space equals free Y, that should, that should do it, I think. As nothing shows up. Did I do something wrong? Uh, oh gosh, I did. Okay, <laughs> I just pasted it in without, oh, well, it would help if I looked at the error message and not just sit here waiting for it to do something. Y equals value, position equals fill. While I'm here, let's, um, let's, we can make like a nice color. I don't know, maybe brewer. I don't know. I haven't used, I don't use those that often anymore. Like the qualitative one and I don't know, something like that. There we go. That's what I was wanting. Okay. Okay. So using space equals three is what lets it have the, um, the e makes them all even like that versus having them all be different, um, sizes. And we can say labs, so what is on the x-axis? Percent of water sources. Y can be null. Oh, I already have a labs. Okay, let's put it in here. And let's, um, and let's make the, let's make a scale x continuous and make it labels equals scales percent like that. All right. And we will call this, we will call this, um, good enough here. So let's zoom in here and talk about this just for a minute and see what we can see here. Whoops. Okay, so like we already saw and knew before, this payment here, huge impact, not knowing about how, how payment is happening, huge impact on whether water is available. On this water tech, we see here that um, the rope and bucket is very associated the other way with yes, like rope and bucket is um, more likely to have water available and things like um, this, this, a hand pump or unknown are more likely to be at no. Over here on installer, there are differences, right? Like private and private person are more likely to be at yes. And um, water aid, I'm not sure who they are, but they're like more likely to be over here at no. So we do see these differences here that the model is what the model is picking up on. So that is, so, um, so we started from, you know, EDA, we used use models to set up our model. We uh, trained a model, and in our exploring our results here, um, you know, we see results that I think are probably um, learning something real. And then, you know, we learned some things here about this data that maybe I would like to know more about before having a lot of confidence in using these kinds of predictions. Okay, so we walked through a whole modeling analysis here. We did some exploratory data analysis, and we did um, feature engineering, which in this case I think was quite important um, because we had um, we had uh, you know factor levels with 
uh, you had categorical data with many, many factor levels, and we m lots of missing data. We had to decide how to handle that, whether to encode that missing data as meaningful or impute the missing data. We um, we fit our models, and then we evaluated our models, and then um, explored variable importance for them. So this is kind of like a, a beginning to end model analysis that we walk through um, uh, to show you like what can we learn about these water sources and what contributed to these kinds of um, predictions and how um, accurately are we able to predict using the data we have. I hope this is helpful and I will see you next time.